Access to healthcare is an issue most countries grapple with, and South Africa is no exception. One of the greatest healthcare challenges our nation faces is a severe shortage of suitably skilled medical professionals and academic specialists. South Africa has a doctor to patient ratio of 5.5 doctors per 10,000 people. This ratio is worse in our rural areas, where research shows that there are only 5.5 doctors per 100,000 people. The situation is acute. It borders on national crisis. And that background alone explains why Discovery Foundation was formed to become part of the solution to support the national effort in remedying this situation. Four categories of awards have been granted annually. Academic Fellowship, Sub-Specialist, Rural Fellowship and Excellence Awards. We wanted to make sure that within 10 years we had invested at least 100 million to train 300 specialists. So the foundation for us has been, has been one of the primary vehicles of the manifestation of that idea of a force for social good. And I think if we achieve our goals of a step change in the healthcare system and in fact right at the top of the healthcare system getting people trained up, the effect on society will be dramatic. Healthcare is the microcosm, uh, it is a microcosm of society. If that functions well, society tends to function well. This year we launch a fifth category, the Discovery Foundation MGH Fellowship Award. It became quite clear to us that this is an opportunity for a fifth component of the Discovery Foundation. We launched it now for the first time, uh, now at the end of May, and we've picked the first candidate together with UCT who will be going across to MassGen uh, for, for that research. I was driving home. Um, I screamed. <laughs> I said, what? You're kidding me. <laughs> and this was Prof Mayosi calling me saying, uh, Neriswa, um, I just want to inform you that you got the fellowship. I was like, my goodness, God is good. I was quite excited. It was a dream come true for me. South African academic specialists are dwindling and aging. What we need very, very urgently is the creation of a new breed of mid-career people to replace them. When I got to high school, I actually thought I love the idea of being a doctor, you know, and helping people. So I just said, I'm going to study hard. And I knew if you want to be a doctor, you have to get good grades. So that's what I did. I spent my days just studying. My grandmother used to complain that we don't have enough paraffin. You have to go sleep at some point. You can't study day and night. So it was, so it was a childhood dream, but it sort of grew on me. And it's something up till this day I don't regret. I look back and I say, if I hadn't taken this path, what would I be? And I say, I'll still be a doctor. My interest in liver disease, in fact, started when I was an intern at Frey in East London. Um, I managed a young lady who presented with acute liver failure from hepatitis B. I asked my consultant, what do I do? He says, intubate and put her in ICU. So I called Cape Town, uh, Professor Wendy Spearman's unit, and they gave me a list of things to do. I spent my whole weekend in hospital and she walked out. When this uh, fellowship was conceived, one of the, the main goals of the program would be to try to train promising young physicians and physician researchers uh, who, um, from, from South Africa, um, homegrown as it were, uh, to uh, come to uh, Mass General uh, to enhance and enrich their training in a given disease area. And, and really, perhaps the most important aspect of this was to bring it back, to bring it back to their institution uh, to enhance um, and elevate those programs at their home institutions uh, and, and, and to really seed those, those, uh, those activities with their newfound knowledge. She's going there for years, she's got a structured project that she's going to be looking at. Um, you know, she's going to go as a clinical research fellow, which means that hopefully what she's going to be looking at is hepatitis C in transplantation, looking how certain genotypes affect the results of transplantation for, um, for hepatitis C. It's a very active unit and she will get exposure to 
um, the most current trends in the management of, of liver diseases. So it's a fantastic opportunity for her and I think she's got the credentials to make the most of it. Otherwise we wouldn't have put her forward for the award. Um, she clearly was an established uh, professional in, in, in hepatology and gastroenterology uh, at her home institution. But she wanted, it was very evident in our interactions, to take it to the next level. She yearned for that exposure to an American tertiary care program uh, you know, at, the, at the highest level of, of, of um, uh, academic medical care. We have a really top-notch uh, department that is on the cutting edge of liver uh, and liver failure and liver transplant. And Dr. Chung is one of the best. And so Nellie will benefit from his outstanding mentorship, his research experience, his clinical experience. She's going to learn about new techniques in transplantation, new techniques in liver disease, how to treat them and bring those skills back to South Africa and help to develop this field which, re which remains in its infancy in this country. We're looking for dedicated physicians um, that are devoted to a particular area of clinical expertise, who have demonstrated drive, who have demonstrated curiosity, and who have demonstrated a commitment to the field and to their country and community. And um, Nellie really was a standout candidate, and we feel extraordinarily privileged. I actually received an email from our gastroenterology department saying, essentially, we love her, when can she come? And I think that's exactly the kind of candidates that we want to see applying. It wouldn't be possible, and I'm grateful to Discovery, you know, for granting me this wonderful opportunity. We think that there is an exponential power to education, and that training health leadership is a critical legacy and solution to some of the biggest challenges in global health. I want to go there, grab what I can, learn as much as I can, and come back home. South Africa has got a very proud legacy in medicine, a legacy of invention, a legacy of innovation, and a legacy of leadership in the world. We need to make sure that we're investing in ensuring that we perpetuate that legacy, we grow it, and we make sure that it benefits future generations of people in this country.